Good morning, my name is Julian Kekilani Ako, and I am a member of the board of directors of the Hawaiian Civic Club of Honolulu. On behalf of our club, we welcome all of you here this morning to this kupuna kuka kuka. Uh, first off, want to mahalo Jacob, Brian, Kaumako Kala Aki, who did two beautiful oli for us to get us started here. Oh, I'm a little nervous, um, but I know I'm among friends. Um, and so I'm just going to ho'omau and get started. Ho'omua. This is an event that was planned as part of the upcoming celebration of the 100th anniversary of the start of the Hawaiian Civic Club movement. Um, I need to be very careful because this event is not actually a part of that 100th anniversary celebration, but it is an activity that leads up to the 100th birthday, which will be celebrated on December 7th, 2018. So some of the members of our club thought that it would be good for us to take pause and to reflect a little bit about the history spanning almost 100 years already of what some people refer to, I guess, as the Hawaiian Civic Club movement. To refresh a little bit our memories, in 1917, our patron, Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole, uh, apparently had a meeting with six other gentlemen. They were all gentlemen. Uh, in 1917, when he had returned to Honolulu, from his kuleana as a delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives representing the territory of Hawaii. And that work, by the way, spanned 1902 to 1922. So he was home here in 1917 and a little concerned about the status of our people, of our Native Hawaiians. And so he got together with these six other gentlemen and they agreed that they would form an organization. Apparently, the, this meeting was held at Pu'alei Lani, <coughs> uh, Prince Kuhio's home in Waikiki. And so the things that they were concerned about was starting an organization that would be dedicated to the education of our people, which would help to elevate, promote, um, and promote our social, economic, civic, and intellectual status. They were also concerned about the need to preserve our culture, our language, and our traditions. And so out of that then, the Hawaiian Civic Club, and it was, by the way, called Hawaiian Civic Club, period, Pau. That was it, because it was the first club that was formed uh, and uh, 
on December 7th, 2018 um, <clears throat> is a founding date for the club. So as I understand it, in the 1920s, there were other clubs that started to form throughout Hawaii. And so to, to distinguish the first club from those other clubs that were um, established in Hilo and elsewhere, then the, the club's name changed to Hawaiian Civic Club of Honolulu. And so that was our beginning, beginnings, rather. Over the years, the movement has grown so that today, we have over 50, I don't know, I, I think the last I heard it was 58, but there, there have been some changes, I believe. So I think it's safe to say we have over 50 Hawaiian Civic Clubs uh, that span not only across Hawaii Nei, but also across the U.S. continent. How proud we should be of the growth of this movement and all of the things I think that have been accomplished over the 100 years. So the purpose of today's Kuka Kuka session is for us to have an opportunity to be educated and also an opportunity to document the live testimony and extensive contributions to the community made by some of our senior civic club members over the decades. So, you know, I was trying to think, um, this thing is called kupuna kuka kuka, and I was trying to think, okay, what, what defines a kupuna in this context? Because, you know, I'm a kupuna, I'm 75 years old, I have a grandson, but I certainly am not of the stature of these five kupuna who, only, who not only have the age factor, but they also have the experience factor of having served our people through the Hawaiian Civic Club system. And so I, I, this morning I was busy on my calculator on my iPhone adding years up. And so, ladies and gentlemen, here seated before you, you have five people whose experience and service in our Hawaiian Civic Club movement totals well over 275 years. Isn't that amazing? Five people contributing 275 years. And the youngster of the group, she only has given 45 years of her life to our, our system. And the oldest, get this, 73 years of service. <laughs> Mahalo Nui, Auntie Gladys. And so, we're, we're so happy to have this occasion. And I'm looking forward to it so I can learn from them. And I hope you are as well. So at this point, what I, I need to do is I would like to invite to the podium someone who probably doesn't need any introduction. He is the current president of the Honolulu Civic Club, but he's actually here wearing two hats, or maybe three, I don't know. Uh, he's so versatile. So our CEO of Kamehameha, who is one of the sponsors of today's event, um, Jack Wong was not able to be here, and so he designated Manu Boyd to welcome you on Kamehameha's behalf and to speak on his behalf. Manu? Mahalo ya oi e Keiki Lani. You know, when you're 75 years old and your name Keiki Lani, that means that youth is forever. And I appreciate that. E kipa mai o koa pauloa i ke ia hale o ululani hale maka iwa kilo moku ma nakula o kamehameha maka palama aloha kakahi aka kako. Um, it, it is a pleasure to welcome you here. I, I will begin with, um, uh, with my welcome um, on behalf of our, our uh, Chief Executive Officer, Livingston Jack Wong, and, and welcome you to Kaiva Kilo Moku. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge um, Jamie Mililani Fong, who is the manager of Kaiva Kilo Moku, who's standing there. And this is um, really her, um, her, her hale 
uh, and it really it is our Halle, and I want to uh, particularly speak about the room that we are in, this Ululani Halle. Let's all say Ululani Halle, Ululani Halle, and this Ululani um, was a chiefess of, of Hilo, Hawaii, and she was a relative of Kamehameha Ekahi, and her husband was Keavea Heulu. Keavea Heulu was uh, the right-hand man um, of Kamehameha Ekahi in, in battle. So Ululani and Keavea Heulu um, had a, a keiki, Keohohiva, Keohohiva and Kepookalani had Aikanaka, Aikanaka and Kamai had Keohokalole, Keohokalole and Kapaakea had Kalakaua, Lili'u, Likelike, and Leleyohoku. So that shows you the, the, the connection between the Kalakaua families and the Kamehameha families. They were really one in the same. Uh, the, the, the melee that Jacob did, um, and he just cut my line because I was going to do that one anyway, but... <laughs> And the mele, and, and, and Mahalo Nui for both, both mele. The first one was written by the chiefest Ululani. Ooeia uh, Ekalani Nui Mehameha. The second one is attributed to Mary Kavena Pukui Onauna Ikahala Mekalehua. But speaking about Ululani, the name of this house and the words that she uh, chanted to Kamehameha as he entered Hilo Bay. Ooeia Ekalani Nui Mehameha. Um, uh, says that you indeed are the chief Kamehameha. You are the one who will call the Eva bird, the Eva bird. And this particular Eva bird was a supernatural bird that had uh, uh, special powers. And this bird, Kaiva, the frigate bird, let's all say frigate. It's a kind of nice, nice thing to say on a, on a Saturday morning. Frigate. Frigate. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's a lot of, lot of uh, zest in that one. But the, the, the evil bird that would hook all the islands together. So, so, so Ululani, the poet Ali Ivahine, is, telling, is challenging Kamehameha, saying that you are the one. You need to call that, that evil bird who will hook the islands together a como, to enter you. So he had not quite begun the, the final um, uh, of uh, establishment of Hawaii Island uh, as his kingdom, and this is well before 1792, the Battle of Iao on Maui. And so she then says, Aole Ivehevehena, Aole Ivaihona Konapo, referring to that Eva bird, is that that bird's night has not quite ended yet, day has not come, Okahoa Keiae, but this is the ignition, this is the igniting, I, Ululani, your senior, am challenging you, Kalani Nui Mehameha, King Kamehameha, Okahoa Keiae, this is the igniting, of this is, I'm lighting that fire, and then she says, my beloved one of the ha'au rain that, 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 that flies and flurries inland of au au lele. Um, uh, so in this mele, we have three lines of something that is very important in our, in our culture, and that is ho'okipa. To, to be uh, hospitable, to welcome. And she says, e komo ikahale o keloha, uh, Enter the house of royal affection. Uh, e Bathe in the sacred pool of ponaha keone. E inu ika ava akane ikanuai i Hawaii. Drink of the ava. Uh, that Kane has planted here in Hawaii, Ola Yakini Akua Ya Oi. The many, many uh, deities live on through your good deeds, a name chant for Kamehameha. And so, with that, we acknowledge that this particular Hawaiian cultural center that is uh, um, a, 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 a beacon at, at Kamehameha Schools Kapalama uh, for our students, for our community, having events such as this was exactly as it was intended to be. Kaiva Kilo Moku is really the the, the dream of a former Kamehameha Schools trustee, Myron Pinky Thompson. And so our Hale Mana, which is the, the front building there, is named in his honor as well. So Hale Mana, um, Ululani Hale. We have the, 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 the classroom area on, on this end over here, Napu'u Mai'a, which is named for the, the highest point of the Kapalama uh, Ahupua'a. And on this side over here where we have our uh, a, a Hawaiian arts um, uh, area, uh, that area is known as Kalai Pohaku. So for those of you cru crusaders in the audience who think you own your own Kalai Pohaku down Kaimuki side, ours is older. 
So Kalaipohaku is the name of this side of the Kapala Ma'ahupua'a, which is, which is between here and the road that goes up to Aleva Heights and also down to Natsunoya Tea House. That whole area there is um, Napu'umai'a. On the other side of, of the Kapalama Ahupua'a is um, Kiana Kamano. And so that, that borders on Kalihi Valley. When you go forward into uh, Makai, into the Ahupua'a, we have Kaivi Ula. Kaivi Ula is the, the original campus of Kamehameha Schools. Of uh, Kamehameha School for Boys in 1887, and before, long before the H1 freeway and all that traffic, never have, but right across where Farrington High School is in 1894, Kamehameha School for Girls opened, all as a part of Kaivi Ula, and more Makai of that is called New Helevai. So this is the Aina that we are, that we are all enjoying today that welcomes all of you as members of the uh, Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, um, of, of, our, of our public, and especially to our panel of kupuna um, that are here today. Anolaila Ekipa Mai Oko, again on behalf of our, our Chief Executive Officer, Jack Wong, welcome to Kaiva Kilo Moku Hawaiian Cultural Center. Aloha. <coughs> Wait, Anapao. <laughs> Because now I get to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about, um, about some of the things that Julian said earlier. So we have, first of all, we've never turned 100 years old before, and I don't think anybody in the room has either. Anybody turned 100 yet? So what we've actually uh, really discovered, and this was really pointed out to us by Kamehameha Schools, that this is our centennial year. Uh, 1918 to 2018, this is our centennial year. So we mark our centennial this year. Our anniversary is actually on December 6th. Uh, 1918, or it will be on, in 2018. So I've been, I have all of these beautiful books. I was on the phone yesterday with our Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs president, Anel Amaral, and, and she was, and she had the ear of, of, of my cousin, uh, Betty Jauna Nanika'ala Keala, trying to figure out the history, and uh, it was a commercial advertiser, as, as well as Hawaiian newspapers, but the, the, the Pacific commercial advertiser on Saturday, December 7th, 1918 that reported yesterday at the Alexander Young Hotel. So if, 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 the, if the report came out on December 7th and it begins with the word yesterday, what day was a club founded? December 6th. I know, and all of our shirts say December, December um, 7th, so we, need, we don't need white out, we need red out. But, but Julian is correct, and, and his, and his uh, mo'olelo, which is really important to our mo'olelo, and the mo'olelo that you'll be hearing from our kupuna, comes to, uh, from one of the earliest uh, members of our club, Sis Wiedemann. And she's part of that Pana Eva Wiedemann family, uh, she, a, a strong one, and one of the first female members of our club, because our club initially was Kane only, yeah? <laughs> and I know, and you know how much our dues were for, for, the, for the year? Three dollars. And they had lunch every week at the Alexander Young Hotel. They really had it going on. Now we can barely get a board meeting going once a month, but that's another story. <laughs> but in any case, the, the, the founding fathers, if you will, of, of, the, um, of the Hawaiian Civic Club, and that, that is the original name, was an organization called the Ahahui Pu'uhonua o Nahawai'i. And that Ahahui was also known as the Hawaiian Protective Society, and Kalaniana Ole was the president. So the Hawaiian Civic Club is just one of several projects of Ahahui Pu'uhonua o Nahawai'i. Uh, after the club was founded in, um, uh, in December of, of 1918, uh, the next the, uh, event or the next event that they were planning for was the, the, the 100th anniversary of the passing of King Kamehameha the Great. And he passed away in May of, eight, of 1819. So in 1918, this is so confusing, but I get them, don't worry. In 1918, they are now looking towards the, the next year, uh, 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 1919, and they, they form what is called the Komite Ho'ohivahiva. So Komite, meaning committee, like we say Komike today, Ho'ohivahiva, to honor, to bring honor to. Uh, and among the members of that was a, a, a graduate of Kamehameha Schools, Charles E. King, as well as Kalaniana Ole. And again, this was a project of Ahahui Pu'uhonua o Nahawai'i. That Ahahui also had a newspaper of, associated with it called, first called uh, Pu'uhonua, and then um, Pu'uhonua o Nahawai'i, and the Luna Ho'oponopono, or the editor, 
was Reverend Akaiko Akana. Reverend Akaiko Akana, that same year in 1918, was named as the Kahu of Kauai Hao Church. And one thing I like to always share about Reverend Akaiko Akana, aside from him being a, a, a dear and close friend of Kalaniana Ole, is that he talks about, about, uh, about Hawaiian uh, mana and, and Hawaiian strength. And his writings are published in a book called Light Upon the Mist that was published by the Pu'a Foundation, which is a nonprofit uh, part of the uh, United Church of Christ. And in his writings, Light Upon the Mist, he talks about race consciousness. And one thing that he says that always stays with me is that in order for, for Hawaiians to to be fully empowered and to really realize the mana of their of their in, of their inheritance as Oivi Hawaii is that we need to celebrate our heritage and we need to return to the land. So another project of Ahahui Pu'uhonua Ona Hawaii that Reverend Akana was also a part of was the Hawaiian Rehabilitation Act. So the, the goals of the Hawaiian Civic Club and the Hawaiian Rehabilitation Act were exactly the same, put forth by the same people. That act eventually is written in uh, 1920 and passed in 1921 as the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. But the Hawaiian Civic Club and the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act the goals were to restore the social, intellectual, and economic status of all Hawaiians and to increase uh, pride in race heritage. That, that, that was the, the exact words of our, of our Prince Kalaniano Ole. Anolaila ikeia makahiki piha makahiki we are marking the centennial in 2018 of the 1918 founding of the club. We are acknowledging our date, December 6th. But I'm going to change the shirt. December 6th, uh, 1918. But it's because of the foresight of Kalaniano Ole. And his main concern was the, um, the, the, the great number of Hawaiians who had... Uh, been uh, reduced to living in tenement housing in Honolulu and in the larger cities ar around uh, the, the neighbor islands as well. Tenement housings were really considered slums. And we all have relatives who lived in down in Akepo. Akepo area down by Liliha and, and King Street down the, before you get to Kamakapili Church and down by Central Union Church and in Hilo and in Wailuku. And our kupuna had no capacity separated from the land, they had no jobs, they had no money, had no concept of, of even of, of, of economic well-being. So that, those are the reasons why our, our, our ali'i, Kalani Ole, brought us all together. And without him, we wouldn't be here today. That's a very long story, but it's a very important one. The last uh, comment I'd like to make, and I'd, I'd like to invite all of you to, uh, to enjoy this year's song contest of Kamehameha Schools, which will be televised uh, on on uh, Friday, uh, March 16th. And the theme is Ihookahi Kamanao, being of one thought, honoring the centennial of the Hawaiian Civic Club movement. So I'd like to just point out some of the club songs that will be sung. Looking at the lovely Tony Lee in the front here. Junior girls singing Uluvehi Oka'ala, the club song of the Pearl Harbor Hawaiian Civic Club. Uh, the senior girls singing Lei no Ka'iulani, the club song of the uh, Princess Ka'iulani Hawaiian Civic Club. The freshman co-ed singing um, Aloha no Oka'u, Uncle George Naope's song. Ke'i ke'akuau, kanani oka'u. That's all you're going to get. But anyway, that's the freshman co-ed. Queen Emma Hawaiian Civic Club song, Kalele Onalani, being sung by the, the sophomores. Uh, Kohala, South Kohala Hawaiian Civic Club. Hoi hoi, kapiina o vaime, nakua hivi elima. So I invite all of you to enjoy the mana of the 100 years of history through music. Oh, Wait, we have trustee Colette Machado here. Ho'olehua is being sung by the sophomore girls, and that is the Ho'olehua Civic Club song. It's a waltz, so you can go ahead and get ready to dance to that. Beautiful, beautiful mele. Ano Laila, with this long welcome, I want to again welcome you here. Enjoy, enjoy what we were meant to nurture and preserve and enjoy 
and uh, and 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 so here we are today with this beautiful panel. I am now going to pass this on to another Molokai girl. We have two Molokai girls in the front row. Well, I'm, I'm not talking about Julian Ako. I'm talking about my classmate Pohai. But uh, Julian will go ahead and introduce um, Pohai, who's the moderator for today. Mahalo for your indulgence with this, this long intro. Aloha nui kako. Mahalo, mahalo nui manu. Okay, take out your pencils and pens. It's a little testy time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We got so much information, I don't know if all of you can remember everything that Manu shared. Um, when you're my age, kind of hard at times to even remember where I parked my truck. Um, and that's why I have my, my notes here in uh, 18 font, 18 point font, so I can see. Even with my reading glasses on, I still need 18 point font. Okay. At this time, I'd like to uh, in invite up the chairperson of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. OHA is also one of the, the two sponsors of this event. And so please help me welcome Colette Machado. Jacob, come here, help me with this. Hello, Jacob. Okay. Oh, what a hard act to follow. How about another hand for Manu Boyd? In 1978, I was part of the Alulike formation in the early years with Winona Rubin. And Nathaniel, John Nakeala, and also Manu Boyd were part of it. One of the uh, kupuna that had an influence on in Hawaii, even till today, to her two, through her two daughters, his Auntie Edith Kanakaoli. She came up with this, uh, this uh, so-called theme for our organization. And it begins simply like this, e alulike mai kako e nao iwi o Hawaii. Till today, I never forgot what that meant. It says, natives of Hawaii, let us all work together. Today, we have come to celebrate these uh, special people. I was talking to Auntie Gladys earlier today, Nick, who sat next to me. She's a graduate of Roosevelt High School in 1944. I don't have to calculate how old she is, but she's, her mind is there. She's still right on the kini popo, as they say. On the island of Molokai, when I was a most, uh, what we call, robust young person, I grew up under the shadows of these activist kupunas. And I look back and I tell myself, and this is something all of us have to pay attention to. What did they teach us? Are we carrying that, that light in our spirit and in our works that we do with our hands? What did they contribute to our growth as mentors or as inspirational characters, even if we weren't related? The number one thing they portrayed was love for one another, which is ohana. And, you know, I truly believe when love is given, love is returned. As Hawaiians, we must never forget that, that wherever we may go, we are family. And the more we talk about our connections and our genealogy, it becomes alive. So when I look at our kupuna that we are honoring today, that is so much a part of that relationship which with whoever they were associated with, organization they belong to, and also to what their contributions have been made to the Hawaiian Civic Club. So I say mahalo to you, and every time I, I do something that's really exemplary, I tell myself, oh, I hope Auntie Clara is giving me the shaka sign. I hope Auntie Mary Lee is with her eyeglasses looking up and saying, right on, Colette, you did a good job. When I'm humble, I tell myself, oh, Mama, please, please thank you for raising me with a humble heart. And these are the things that are going to carry us through the worst of times and the best of times. And these are the traditions that we pass on to our ohana and our lahui. So I want to say thank you to Anita and also to Patricia Brand, Brand for considering to allow me to speak. This is my first public uh, 
Coming out since the Skadi audit, the GFOS are all familiar about, about with OHA. I'm not here to talk about that, but I'm here to affirm that OHA continues to provide resources to benefit all Hawaiians. Much of what we were accused of went directly to Native Hawaiians. We provided a small contribution to this event, but look what it's doing. Magnified over 200 plus years of service to Hawaii. What a wonderful contribution. So let me begin, I have some notes here. We are celebrating the result of Prince Kuhio foresight in establishing a forum, an opportunity for our people to thrive by taking the lead in developing and supporting a movement to create strong, active Hawaiian community. We are thriving in spite of what other people might say. These are witnesses to the growth of all of what we are accomplished and what we want to achieve for the future. Our kupuna is the backbone of what we do and what we stand for. The moment we forget those principles, aoe ke aloha. Oha's mission is not unlike Kuhiu's dream. We need to advance our people in all aspects of our economic spectrum. Oha has always been a supporter of every aspect of the community and also to the Hawaiian Civic Club as much as what we could provide for. Many community activities have been supported financially and administratively over the years. This support includes physical support such as the nearly 10 million OHA provided in grants and $367,000 in sponsorship in fiscal year 27 alone. We will be, uh, we have committed to uh, purchase a table to join um, with the Holoku Ball. Um, so we're very proud of that, that uh, purchase of that one table. Those things add to all of the events that are sponsored that come through OHA that we want to consider. So we, we are proud of that. Before I, I divert a little bit more, I got to pay tribute to this person. You know, when I grew up, when I was when I graduated from the University of Hawaii in 74, I was very angry, I was bitter, and they did a film on me called Colette and my accomplishments, because I did graduate in 74 from UH Manoa. This one individual that worked with us in Alulike, and his name is Gardi Kealoha, he kind of took me under his arm, and he, you know Jana, you know Pat. Not everybody could stand guard. But somehow he saw in me some, somebody that could tolerate him, but he also taught me so many things. It's because of him I attended the first Holoku Bayou folks I ever went to was at Halikulani, the old Halikulani. Um, he was able to, you know, we would travel with Alulike and, you know, my guard, he would say to me, we're going to share one room, me and you, Colette. And I'm thinking, gee, guard, why you pick me? Because I snore. <laughs> but he knew I could, me and him, we could tolerate each other. But throughout my years of him mentoring me, where would I be as a Hawaiian? Because he wanted the best for me in all that I did in my, in my culture. So I would take away the bitterness and anger that I had in me that he saw. And he accomplished that. I was elected to OHA in 1996. And I have served over, over 21 years there. And my term will expire in the year 2020, 20, 19, 20, 2020 is when my term is up for this last election. But I want to acknowledge him because he loved the, the civic club movement. They were part of the home rule when I first met Pat. We were part of that home rule movement that we met at QLCC. Little did they know that they were going to make inroads and create the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and create better... In take away the injustices upon our people and make that light. I first met Pat at that event and I'm thinking, who are these Hawaiians? They're mukmuks, yeah? You know what you call the high-class Hawaiians? They were brilliant, they had college degrees, they had money, and I'm thinking, why am I here? I'm just a grassroots person. But guard, he patiently included me. He said, you have to come, you have to listen, pay attention, Colette, see what these leaders are. And throughout my experience with them in that exposure, I saw stellar individuals that gave of themselves unselfishly. And so I, I close with that in your, in your mind. And today we have an opportunity to acknowledge these 
individuals before us that were stellar. Um, you know, I have to say a little bit more about Gard. He was a wonderful cook. And everything he would slap together was ono. Uh, whether it's his chicken heka, whether it's his, whatever he would do was delicious. So that's how he would bait me for come with him, because we're going to eat dinner. I said, sure, I'll follow you. And he knew all the good places. But one thing he would tell me, he said, Colette, I'm going to make stew tonight, and I'm going to get poi. You come to my house, we're going to eat stew and poi, because he liked company, so me and him can grind. So he would eat the stew. Now, this is Guard Kelo. He's so classy, right? He's an art extraordinary person. He knows everything. He reads ferociously. He knows all these things. He would soup his stew, and he would say, oh, this kai is so good. That means the soup is delicious. And we would scoop the poi and put it in our mouth. And that's the kind of exchange I learned as a young Hawaiian angry woman for somebody that wanted to cultivate me for where I am a leader today. So Hawaiian Civic Clubs, Holomua, do all you can. And we ask that we celebrate this centennial with such a big bang that we can commemorate all of the experiences we have had in our own clubs. Hey, you folks know how to battle too, you know. I've been at these conventions and you folks kick butt. I mean, I'm over there, oh, okay, now what you gonna do now? And the other one go over there, I say, oh, Kalaina, get up there, bring peace, please. You folks know how to scrap and that's important because at the end of the day, what are we? We are family. We are Ohana, and that is our culture, and that is our legacy we must continue to provide for all our people. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And Miss Liz Kauka, I love you. You've been around a long time, too. You're an icon at Roosevelt High School. Mahalo. Mahalo Nui, Trustee Machado. Um, I was told that Trustee Rowena Akana is supposed to be here, but I didn't see her. And I did want to recognize her if she is here. Maybe she's on her way. Okay. Um, let's see, some housekeeping things. If you're looking for the Lumi Ho'opau Pilikia bathrooms, go out that side door or this side door. There are bathrooms on both sides of Ululani Hale, if you need to, to use them at any time. Um, I did want to mention that today's event is being videotaped. Um, so hopefully the backs of your heads in the audience look nice, um, <laughs> because that's all they're probably going to get. And of course, our, our beautiful panel here, Maika Ilo. Um, but, you know, we're very grateful that the students from the video productions class at St. Francis High School, along with their advisor, the director of the technology department, um, Mr. Ryan Raguz, they're here to videotape the whole proceeding. And the reason for this is that our club is hoping to make copies of videotape available to the other clubs so that uh, those people who were not able to be here today perhaps will have an opportunity to hear the wisdom that's shared with us thanks to these kupuna. So, Maika Iloa. Okay, um, now I need to introduce the moderator of this Kuka Kuka session. Um, Pohai Ryan has been part of the Hawaiian Civic Club movement for about 11 years, I guess. She's currently president of the King Kamehameha Hawaiian Civic Club. She's also served as president of the Kailua Hawaiian Civic Club. She's been a member of the Hawaiian Civic Club of Waimanalo. And most recently, she saw the light and she joined the Hawaiian Civic Club of Honolulu. So that's why she gets to wear our, our club t uh, polo shirt this morning, is because she's, she's also a member of our club. Um, Pohai is well known for her having modeled what Prince Kuhio talked about in terms of civic engagement. She has served us 
in the state of Hawaii Senate. She has been very active in community development in several nonprofit organizations, um, serving our people as well as the rest of the people of Hawaii. And currently, she's also the executive director of the Native Hawaiian Hospitality Association. So she has a, a very, very uh, important role here with us this morning to facilitate and moderate <clears throat> the discussion, the interviews that will be um, conducted with our five kupunan. So at this time, I turn the microphone over to Pohai Ryan. Mahalo. Aloha, good morning. Um, one of the things I want to do before I get started with our panelists, um, I would like to ask uh, civic club members, obviously you're all civic, most of you are, so I'm going to go down the list if I miss your club. I just want you to raise your hand so people can see where you're from. Um, we have Wahiwa. You were the first ones here, by the way. <laughs> Um, Pearl Harbor, okay. Ko'olau Poco, Ko'olau Loa, Kwayanai, um, Molokai Ho'olehua, <laughs> King Kamehameha Hawaiian Civic Club, oh nice. Okay, I know I'm forgetting some people. Makaha. Yes. Um, lua Lua Le. Yes. Why Lua? Prince Kuhio. Oh, nice. Nanai Kapono. Oh, nice. Did I miss any more? Queen Emma. That's right, Queen Emma. I'm sorry, there's a lot of you here too. Any more? Queenie Piolani. Queenie Piolani. Nice. Nice. That's Hawaii Island. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, but thank you for uh, being, coming here and um, gracing us to honor our kupuna today. I also would like to thank the Honolulu, the Hawaiian Civic Club of Honolulu, who is our host today. If they could all stand, actually. I'd like to acknowledge the club. <laughs> the Sea of Red. I also want to thank uh, Pat Brandt and Anita Naune who had the inspiration for this event. And thank you for asking me, though I did want to defer to Manu, my classmate. His memory, just it's just astounding. I'm, I'm, I'm Makule compared to you. I can't remember half the stuff he said, actually. It just always fascinates me how he can spot out the mo'olelo, my kai. Um, before we get started, though, I do want to sh um, make a correction on the program. I was... Um, rightfully so, corrected on my error, and I'm the one that typed the program by uh, Kupuna Gladys, who is a founding member of the King Kamehameha Hawaiian Civic Club. She said, Pohai, you are not the president of Kailo Hawaiian Civic Club. You are the president of King Kamehameha Hawaiian Civic Club. And she wanted to make sure I said that to the audience. So, thank you. I also want to acknowledge the Oahu Council Association President, Roth Puahala, and the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs President, Anel Amaral. Good morning. Thank you, everyone. We're going to, um, just so you know, I have, to, I have to make sure I walk around because I hope I... I can be as vibrant as these kupuna. It, I mean, I want to take your vitamins. I really do. 
No knee. But I will be walking around. I don't like facing my back to the audience, but I might have to. And occasionally, I might have to ask Kaumaka to help with the mics for our kupuna. First, we have next to me Bar Barbara Bobby, as she's well known, Whitney Freeman Mills Diaz. I asked my She is, at 95, has been a faithful Civic Club member since 1960. I was born in 1962, just to keep things in perspective here. <laughs> she joined the Honolulu Hawaiian Civic Club that same year. She is also an honorary member of Kailua, Ko'olau Poko, and Prince Kuhio. She supported... Uh, Ko'olau Loa as well supported all activities of association and served as the hardworking registrar of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs Conventions for many years. Um, everyone, Auntie Bobby. Our next panelist, Kupuna Ann Juliet Kukakina Nathaniel, at 89, has been a Civic Club member for 49 years. She has been a member of the following clubs, Hawaiian Civic Club of Hilo, Prince David Kawananakoa, Ahahui Siwila o Kealoha Aina, which she is currently a member. Kupuna Ann's work in the Civic Club system, she would like to note, are. She proposed the legislation that the Hawaiian language be recognized and be part of the state constitution. This is very significant, obviously, as we know today. She also supported legislation that allowed University of Hawaii Hilo greater flexibility in using general funds to support the Hawaiian Language College. Everyone, let's welcome Kupuna Ann. Our next kupuna, Jana, Nani Kaala Springer Keala. At 85, she has been a Civic Club member since 1973. She has been a member of Ali'i Pawahi Hawaiian Civic Club and is a founding member of that club. Ahahui Siwila Hawaii o Kapole is also a founding member of that club. And now she is a member of Pearl Harbor Hawaiian Civic Club. Jana is a veteran at community engagement as a civic club member and a Hawaiian leader. She worked for Alulike when it was first created. On Alulike worked in effort to sign up Hawaiians to vote in the first OHA election. She was staffed to Senator Jean King with particular focus on Hawaiian issues. She was also a staff person to Lieutenant Governor Jean King when she became Lieutenant Governor with particular focus on Hawaiian issues. Then. Government, I'm sorry, government staff for Oahu, Office of Hawaiian Affairs when it first started, then for civic clubs. She's a founding member of HACPAC. I'm not sure what these acronyms mean, but she'll probably explain it to us. 
Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs Chair, Prince Kuhio S.A. Contest, Member of the Board of Directors, Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs Second Vice President, Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs First VP, Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs President, and the first Wahine President. And she is the immediate past president of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Club Oahu Council President. Everyone, let's welcome Kupuna Jana. Did we lose a panelist? <laughs> Our next panelist is Auntie Gladys Ivalani Rodenhurst, 94. She is probably the longest standing member of the Hawaiian Civic Club system as a member for 73 years. Her first membership was in the Junior Hawaiian Civic Club. I did not know we had one. The Honolulu Hawaiian Civic Club, founder and charter member of the King Kamehameha Hawaiian Civic Club and charter and life member of the Kaiulani Hawaiian Civic Club. Gladys served as recording secretary to Oahu Council Presidents. For association conventions, Gladys served as recording secretary and ran the steno pool. We all know how hard that is. The many leaders she has worked under includes John C. Thompson and A. Pia Anaya at the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. David Bent, Urban Renewal Coordinator for the City and County of Honolulu. Mayor Neil S. Blaisdell's administration. David K. Trash Jr., Hawaii Government Employees Association. Senator Malama Solomon, Representative Anel Amaral, and Trustee Moses Kiali, and Rowena Akana of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Retired from OHA in September 2007 at age 81, with 56 continuous years of government service. Everyone, let's welcome Auntie Gladys. We now have the only Kani on our panel that we thought we lost, but he's back. <laughs> and he was early with the rest of the gang from Waianae. Uncle Albert Hollis Silva, age 88, is a five generations Waianae native and alumna of Kamehameha Schools for Boys, class of 1948. He celebrates his reunion this year, and we promise to have a Wahine entourage with him. <laughs> Entering the luau. I told him, you must take us, one from each decade. <laughs> he is also the proud class representative of his class. Albert has a background working for the Department of Defense Naval Ammunition Depot in Lua Lule and is currently a rancher. That must be the fountain of youth, I think, yeah? Back to the connection of the Aina. Kupuna Silva is a member of the Wainai Hawaiian Civic Club and his mother was one of the founding board members in 1935. Everyone, let's welcome Uncle Albert. <laughs> Sorry if I have to walk around, but I, I need to make sure that they can hear me. That's why I'm not standing on the podium. Although I don't like facing my back to the audience, and especially the camera, but that's why. <laughs> So I, um, please excuse me. So the first question would be for Auntie and Nathaniel. In your background as a civic club member, I am told that you have great institutional memory. Can you share some highlights of milestones and experience as a member of the Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaiian civic club system? First of all, aloha mai kako to all of you. Thank you for inviting me to be on this uh, panel today. As you can see, I have a book here. The second one I didn't bring with me because when I first heard I was going to be on this panel, I started to do research. And that's all I did. And then last night I get something else that's completely different. So I have a report here that I was going to present today, and it's just a mishmash of stuff. So I ask you to please bear with me. All of us sitting here 
as well as all of you sitting out there, are all multitasked peoples. We belong to more than one organization. And all of these organizations that we belong to all work for the same purpose. And they are, this purpose is for the betterment of the Hawaiian people. Thank you. When my husband, William Nathaniel, married me, the first place he took me was down to the Keokaha Hawaiian Homes office to apply for a homestead. I had to call my mother and ask her, Mama, I have to sign this paper. How much Hawaiian do I have? She said, baby, you 50%. OK, I put it down. Fine, nobody ever questioned that. Well. I was a complete blank slate when it came to Hawaiian Civic Club, Hawaiian Homes Commission. I knew nothing. I lived in a middle class community in Hilo. I had to start from scratch. I went to the library. And the librarian took me to this little special room where they had this little book. And it was under lock and key, small book. And it was entitled, The Life and Achievements of Jonah Kuhio Kalani Anaoli. That is where I was introduced to Kuhio. I became immersed in everything that I could possibly find and read on the birth of the Hawaiian Homes Commission. Everything I could get in, I could possibly get in, uh, in my hands. I read it, I studied it. Well, when you look at it side by side, the Civic Club movement is, is very much the same way. You're asking me to, uh, tell you of some of the things that we have done. Well, it's already been mentioned to you about the legislation. And it'll, there's a story that goes to that uh, fact that there is the Hawaiian language in our state constitution. The Hilo Council put together a resolution to take to the convention. And uh, it happened to go to the committee that was going to be in charge. And it was a very heated discussion about why should we have the Hawaiian language put back into the state constitution and have our language recognized. Oh, lots of hot discussion going on. Well, the woman who was chairing this group was very, very hard-nosed and said, I am not going to listen. I am going to give my report not in favor of this resolution. Well, this young man popped up and he said, Madam Chairman, I am going to submit a minority report. Well, when it came to the floor, she gave her report. She said, this is my recommendation that we, not, uh, that we do not adopt this resolution. Well, this young man popped up and he said to the chairman of the, co the convention, I have a minority report. I wish to present at this time. So he did. Again, all of this discussion on the floor. Why, why? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Why? Well, when it came down to the vote, the minority report was voted in. And today, the Hawaiian language is part and part of the state constitution. Oh, 
yes, I remember. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. Well, God bless me if they're going to be offended. Mrs. Uh, Wiedemann, Sis, Sis Wiedemann, she was, she was the chair, and it was her son, <laughs> Arthur Hoke, who presented the Minority Report. So that's uh, one of those things that happened, yeah? But it, it shows that uh, if you know what you want and you have the guts to do it, you, you can do it. And so we have our language as part of our state constitution. The other that was mentioned in my introduction thing was uh, about the um, university. Pila Wilson came to my friend, uh, Ululani Sherlock. Ulu, I need some help at the legislature. Uh, there's this bill over here, and it's kind of tying our hands, and um, we want that to change. She said, well, it'll give me what you want, and, I, and I'll go see somebody. Okay, well, the somebody was me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Ulu said, Auntie, the university wants this. Okay. Well, it just happened. We had a uh, convention in Hilo, and um, Larry Kimura and all of the students, whatever, came and did a workshop at the Nani Law for our convention. And so when the legislation was produced, uh, the university got what they wanted. They wanted to have flexibility so that the monies that were being given to the university's budget for the Hawaii College could be used to uh, grow the Hawaiian Studies program. And I'm very proud that my mo'opona that you heard earlier is a graduate of the Hilo College, the Hawaiian Language College. She is also a master's, and she will be going for her PhD. And she teaches at Punana Leo in Hilo. So I'm very proud of, of my Mo'opuna because it's, you know, our generation is going, we don't speak the language, and so we need to pass it on and have someone else do it for us. And in this case, it's our Mo'opunas who are doing it for us. Another um, thing that happened uh, there during the time of my, my tenure, I was asked to um, speak on behalf of the Kupuna program. I think some of you may have spent time in the classrooms as the Kupuna in the classroom. Well, this young man, um, wanted to do away with the kupuna in the classrooms. Because we had retired school teachers who could become the kupuna in the classroom. You see, the retired teachers had a salary, and they did not need a stipend. The kupuna needed the stipend in order to survive sometimes. And uh, knowing that I came from Kyokaha, where we started this during a summer program with the Kupuna, um, I knew what their social, you know, economic situation was. And so, okay, I'll, I'll take it on, I'll take it. And, and so I did, and um, much to my chagrin, I got chewed out because this golden-haired young man who was running the program, he went to run to his mentor, Doc Mills. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, uh -oh. uh -oh. <laughs> not your fault. <laughs> uh, Doc Mills came and he chewed me out because that was his little golden boy. 
And I was stepping on his toes, and I'm not supposed to do that to the golden boys. And so um, that relationship between me and the doc just never healed. And we had a very close relationship because he was from Hilo, I was from Hilo. I helped him when he first ran for office and all that kind of stuff, yeah. And so uh, it, it really hurt when uh, this young man did this because it ruined a, a, a relationship. So sometimes you have to pick your battles, yeah? yeah? Because sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Okay, some of the other stuff that, um, here's another one. Uh, we were having a problem in Keokaha. The state was gonna move us out. We met, we, well, we were strategizing. Oh, we were gonna be smart. We were gonna strategize this thing. And so um, it came to the point where we had a down pat as to what we were gonna do and who we were gonna get to. Well, I happened to be the one to write all the letters, compile all the information, and the day that a final decision was going to be made, my letter with all of the statistics went to David McClung, and the new chairman of the Wine Homes Commission was at a hearing, and everything came to a dead halt. The state was not going to be able to just move us out. And so part of the um, planning that we did was that if there was going to be any money made, it was going to come to the homesteaders. That we were going to move at no cost to us. We did all of the work that needed to be done. Just happened the day before uh, this me big meeting was going to take place, in fact, it was two weeks, I became ill, had to have surgery, come here, come here. I came home from the hospital, the president of the association, and you gotta come, and you gotta come. My husband said, she just came home from the hospital. And he looks at me and, you know, oh, is she gonna go or is she gonna stay home? You know, and so I said, okay, Maka, you wait. Let me go change, I'll get dressed. <laughs> well, I went down to Kwananako Hall and my brother-in-law was standing there. And, you know, when you just have surgery, you're bent over and you're holding into everything. And he said, sister, stand up straight. <laughs> and so I, I walked in the door and there was lots of discussion going on in, in the room. And the minute I stepped in the door, everything was quiet. Oh, she's here, okay. Somebody go and talk for us. She's here. My husband knew he lost. He knew, oh my God, I have a radical in my house. Because <laughs> that's what they called me. That's what, that was my title. I was an activist. And so, you know, hey, if, if, if that's your kuleana, then you, and you have enough faith in what you're doing, you do it. Yes. In spite of uh, all of the barbs that, oh, you're never gonna do it, and you're not gonna accomplish that. And so thank God I had one friend there. She told the people in the community, you let the girls go and do what they gotta do. If we see them going off the track, we'll bring them back on track. Well, I had to, negotiate, and you know, then the office, the uh, Hawaiian Homes office was down Kawila Street, Hale Kawila, not too far from the Capitol. I had to walk back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, negotiating the number of families, what their homes were worth, what the amount of money was going to have to come from, and so, okay, we finally worked it out. But we had a meeting in Hilo, and this senator was very upset with me. And he said, Mrs. Nathaniel, 
Why do you want to continue to have a ghetto? And I said, I beg your pardon? I said, our homesteads are not ghettos. And so he didn't like that. The planning director of the plan, he didn't like that because their long range plan was you see all of the development that is around the Impaneva, yeah? Fort, Waystock, all that development there. They knew all of that was gonna happen. We didn't know it, yeah? We just knew we wanted to go to Paneva because we wanted to stay together as a community. And so uh, every time the planning director heard my name, he wanted to pull his hair out. Oh, not again, not this lady again, not this lady again. Well, we got the Hawaiian Homes Commission to approve moving the uh, development from Kyokaha. That was the first planned subdivision for the department. All of the infrastructure was in already. And you know, one of the things that happened to all of this I did a lot of studying about the Homesteading Act and the, it, what happened to the Indians, yeah. Okay, 40 acres and a mule, Hawaiians, one acre, not even a machete to help you go cut all that nahele hele to get onto the land. That's, how, that's the comparisons, yeah. Some of the other notable things, uh, and I've probably gone over my 15 minutes, but, uh, <laughs> A color my, but uh, some of the some of the things that, um, that one more kupuna, uh, we will be having during lunch talk story obviously, and she's done a lot of research. I'm fascinated with what she's just sharing. I love it. We do have five panelists, but we'll let you close with one more highlight, Auntie. Okay. And then we can um, share more at lunch. Yes, and then I and then I'll I'll let it go after that. But so, so, some of the memorable things are, we had a convention at Waikoloa, one of the uh, historic sites. Well, the man who was supposed to lead the group over to look at all of the petroglyphs never showed up. Oh, all the huffing and puffing people on this bus. Well, they were calling it the horrific tour. The next morning at the uh, Civic Club convention, I made my uh, apologies to them. And they said, oh, they didn't know that I was the council chair and I was sitting among them. They thought I was just another delegate on the police. So lots of red faces there. <laughs> so. The other was, and then I'm glad that, uh, where is he? He was here earlier this morning. We went to the Stardust at uh, Hotel. They took us, and Hoalipu Drake was my guest. We went to this circle for the Paiute Nation, 84 bus load. We were on bus 85, Hoalipu and I. Bus 85. The, dr uh, the driver had no idea where the hell he was going. <laughs> we got lost. Those days didn't have the kind of telephone system you have now. Yeah? They had to find somebody else to come find us and take us to where all the activity was going. The first person that uh, who I who saw was Ike. So he got something he got from somebody and wrapped it around himself, and he uh, escorted her to give her whole kupu. So, okay, thank you for the extra time. Oh, mahalo. Very nice, very nice. That was very nice. You know, I remind all the young members, we didn't just show up old. We were actually there, some of us, right? And I'm sure you all validate that today. Kupuna Bobby. In preparing for this event, 
you shared how important it is for members to remember to have fun and not to make everything all about work. Can you expound on that and give us examples of what it means to have quote unquote fun in the Hawaiian Civic Club system? That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> I'm going to read this to make sure I don't make any errors. And incidentally, yeah, you haven't been chewed out at all. Let me tell you what it's like. In my wildest dreams, I never thought I'd be sitting here in front of this august body as a kupuna. Believe it. How far we have come in just a hundred years. From a little club, from four, six little clubs all on Oahu to 53 or 50 plus uh, all over the United States. That's some accomplishment. I think Kuhio's dream for his people has become a reality. And it, it now falls to you to carry out that dream. It's interesting that five of the six original clubs were the country clubs, clustered around the mother club of Honolulu. They were all in the country. They knew the value of a civic club. My involvement with the clubs began in 1960. Senator Harry Field, whom some of you may remember, called George and asked that he come to Maui. Senator, Senator Field, he at that time was president of the Fletchling Association, encouraged George to become involved as he could see how vital the clubs would be in Hawaii's future and there would be a need for leaders. Five years later, George became the president following Monsignor Kekawana. This was a period of growth for the association as by 1975, there were 35 clubs. They were involved with the legislature, support the various Hawaiian trusts, and in general, has assumed a position of respect in the community. My recollection of those years with the association is one of warm friendships, wonderful music, and good fellowship. For many of those years, I was chair of the registration for the convention, so I was lucky to see and talk with many members. The clubs were very serious about becoming involved with the legislature, providing funding for the education of the youth and for perpetuating the unique Hawaiian culture. Each convention was evidence of this, judging by the number of resolutions of various concerns that were discussed and passed each year. And yet, with all these serious concerns, there was always time for fun. I remember weekends when whole clubs would come with their kids and camp in the yard at Punalu. It was a little hard on the plumbing, but that was a small price to pay. <laughs> Sometimes, even today, I meet a grown-up who remembers small kid time and the beach at Punalu. That makes it all worthwhile. So with all the good work that you are doing, please remember to sneak in a little fun and comradeship. And remember that this is what the kids will remember. Thank you. Mike Clayton. Who remembers camping in Punalu? Wow. The next question is for Kupuna Jauna. In a way, Jauna, you are an icon in the Hawaiian Civic Club system. You were the first elected Wahine president of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs. Tell us what. <laughs> tell us what that was like, and how you were able to overcome the stronghold of the Kane leadership. <laughs> 
What a question. <laughs> I know you can answer. <laughs> Just make trouble. You. <laughs> well, I became the president upon the passage of the former president, Benson Lee. And then I was elected after that. But I had been serving on the board for quite a while, so it was OK. When I was the president, a number of things happened, but they had all been set in, in, uh, in the past, in the earlier years. And one was that the Mainland Council came to fruition. Um, it had been a battle. There were a lot of people that did not want the Mainland Council to come in. So what we did was we made a memorandum of understanding. So it gave the Mainland Council a year, and it gave the people in Hawaii a year to get used to one another and to make sure that the Mainland Council wanted to belong to us, because you weren't going to influence us. We were going to remain Hawaiian, you know. And it worked out. So far, it has worked out. We have a number of councils on the mainland now, and, and clubs on the mainland. But they've had their own council, too. When you sit here and start listening to the kupuna, all the memories come running back. When I listen to Colette talk about Xi'an and guard, reminded me of a time that we were in Washington, D.C. with Alulike, and we went to a fish house. And those people in that fish house had never seen Hawaiians eat crab. <laughs> and I think they made everybody so ono that they can <laughs> It was so much fun. That was really fun. Miss that old guy. During my um, tenure in office, one of the things was in 1991, it was a memory of Grover Cleveland. And Grover Cleveland was really, really important to Hawaii. But there was no memorial for him. And at the time, the Kalihi Tunnel was being built. And a lady from the Department of Transportation, a Japanese lady, by the way, said, you know, um, if you want, we have these big pohaku coming out of the tunnel. We can bring it and put it on the, uh, on the grass down there on Queen Street. I forgot the name of the building. Do you remember the name of the building, Anil? Anyway, it's, it's there on Queen and uh, this big pohaku with a memorial to Grover Cleveland. And we had a really nice opening there. And I remember the couple that came was, um, yeah, your uncle. And he had this big calabash of water. And I'm trying to, to assist him. And he's going, Psh! I was soaking wet by the time he got there. <laughs> and, and chanting, you know, but it, it, was, it was memorial. <laughs> it was quite a memorial. <laughs> During my tenure, we also had a retreat uh, for the board of directors. And we had the retreat in Iolaniku, uh, Ulhinis, down at Napo'opo'o. And who was it, Anne, that arrived with the big aku? Yeah, <laughs> Brand right out of the ocean. Arrived at our retreat. And it was, it was a wonderful. Peter Ching, many of you will remember Peter Ching, did all the cooking for us. And we had a wonderful time, Peter. Um, people read from the histories. And we, had, we were there like three days. Um, Fred Trotter, who was a Campbell Estate trustee, gave me $2,000 to do that. You know, every once in a while, he would remember that he was Hawaiian. <laughs> Actually, he was, he was a good Hawaiian. <laughs> so it didn't cost the um, association a lot of money. 
Oh yeah, that was sponsored by Keikau also, Keikau Liki, Kwananakor. And if, if you go online to the association, if you're on a computer and you look at uh, the history that was put together by Dari Uchima, you will see, among other things, a picture of a canoe in Kailua Bay. <laughs> and the canoe is Huli. And the, in the water are all the Civic Club directors. <laughs> this was the big, the big entry to the Kailua yeah. Kona Convention, except that the, the canoe Huli. <laughs> so here is everybody hanging on the ama, you know. <laughs> and I wasn't in the canoe. But if you get Bruce and, and guard in the canoe at the same time, you're in trouble, right? <laughs> But I was standing at the, uh, on the stage when everybody started coming in. It was quite a sight because the hair was all, you know, like this. The, the, the clothes were wet. Oh, poor things. But it was, it was a memorial, and you remember that, Anne? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all the hoopla that George planned. <laughs> I made some notes here. You want to talk? No, no, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anne just reminded me to talk about our trip to Kalau Papa. And the reason we went there was because it was, um, well, I guess I was working for Lieutenant Governor Jean King at the time, and it was some kind of a um, memorial, and I can't remember right now. But with the Civic Club, directors did go over and it was uh, you know you can only go two or three at a time in those little planes you know so people would come a few at a time and um, the the patients there were so pleased that they were remembered um, we even brought over our own food we, we had a, a place to stay it was, I guess, where the nurses and the doctors would stay when they went over there. It was uh, a kind of an adventure. I guess there were several adventures when I was the president, yeah? Yes, <laughs> yes that was one of them. And, and it was in order to have the patients there make a decision as to who they wanted to be in charge of them. The State Department of Health or the, or the National Park Service. And so when I was on the commission, we also went down to Kalau Papa and met with the people who were surviving that lived there, and they chose to stay with the National Park Service. And Donna. so it's safe now. Donna? <laughs> Thank you for remembering Donna. that, yes. Um, when you became president, can you share with us how people responded to the first Wahine president? Um, Both external, outside of the civic club system, as well as inside. Tell you the truth, I think that uh, Hawaiian culture is pretty much accustomed to the Wahines uh, taking charge. And, uh, it, I, I, I tell you the truth, I did not notice any uh, any feedback, you know, negative feedback anyway, not from the civic clubs. Yes, every Wahine in this room agrees with you, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned another icon, Benson Lee. Can you tell us, did he have any influence or support in your path to become the president, the first female president? Uh, did he do anything in particular to support that uh, your success in your election? Um, no, he had already passed. Oh, you said I'm sorry. You said that he was the previous president, no, but and you were vice president. Away, yeah. I yeah. was the first vice president. Yes, and he passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. That's how I became the I'm president. Sorry. And then I was elected after that, in the next election. Who would you say was the um, strong examples that were presidents before you, and why? What Share two, two strong examples of the male presidents. 
Well, my own uncle, Filippo Springer, had been the president, for one thing. And I was pretty much brought up in the Civic Club. Um, my uncles, Jack Deshay and his wife, my grandfather was, was a, a pal of, of Prince Cujillo. Um, they lived in Waikiki. You know, they were all living down there together. So I, it was there, always a civic club. When I was a kid, I was going to all these functions. I didn't know what it was for, but it was fun because everybody else's kids were there too, you know. Um, so it wasn't something that was new to me. Uh, it was just something I moved into as, as part of the growing up, you know. It was in your DNA and you're a legacy member. I'm sorry? It was in your DNA and you're a legacy member. I, I guess member. that's one way of putting it, yes. yes. <laughs> I hate to cut you off, Kupuna, yep. but we will be moving on to the next question for Kupuna Gladys. And just to remind everyone that during lunch, obviously we would like you to talk story with our panelists. Auntie Gladys, as a member who was given the kuleana of secretary at many events, gatherings and meetings and conventions. Can you tell us some highlights that you recall in the decision-making and work in the Hawaiian Civic Club system? Aloha. 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 I wish I were as proficient as all the speakers before me who could speak without reading but I'm going to read. <laughs> First of all, I want to say how proud I am to have been a member of the Civic Club Movement for 73 years. <laughs> Thank you. When I graduated from Roosevelt High School in 1944, I joined the Junior Hawaiian Civic Club. I don't know if any of you remember that we had a Junior Hawaiian Civic Club. It was during the wartime, World War II, and we dissolved because the boys were all going to war. And so I went with uh, the Honolulu Hawaiian Civic Club. Anyway, I'm gonna read <laughs> my, my uh, rep response. The ability to merge my professional career and experiences with my passion as a Hawaiian Civic Club member was a blessing. In my years of running the steno pool at conventions for Auntie Sis Wiedemann, who was a recording secretary of the association, we did not have the equipment we have today. To make copies, we had to type stencils and run them off on Mimeograph machines. How many of you remember that? <laughs> and making corrections on a used stencil wasn't easy. When additions were made, we had to type the whole stencil over for the insertions. We couldn't delete and retype like computers. Accurate minutes and notes helped with the organization's decision-making. I could take verbatim the motions and discussions. I was called upon many times to clarify the motion and how we got there. And that was Anel Amaral who would always call, will the secretary please read the motion <laughs> to keep on you know, the topic? So for example, after long discussions, the president would ask to repeat the motion before the vote was taken. So it was important to get the uh, motions accurate. That reputation uh, earned me time make, uh, taking minutes at the council and association levels when the official secretary was unable to make the meetings. During the time of my kupuna, they relied a lot on oral history. It was an art to preserve and record. If the law was not passed, how would we know? In my tenure as scribe, 
I kept all the meeting minutes, con convention booklets, etc. And as was di directed, I placed it in the hands of Hawaii Maoli, who, as I understood, then would be the HCC archives. However, in my last check, no one can find the collection. So, if you are to continue as an organization, I recommend you find the documents and pass it on as I passed on to you. What I also learned is leadership is not only our officers, but in the preparation of all of our members to be leaders. For me, the Hawaiian Civic Club movement represents our ali'i. For remember that you not only have to know where you come from, your generation, but also put action behind it. That is your kuleana. Mahalo. Very nice, very nicely said. Our last planned question is for Kupuna Albert. I think I gotta move to that side. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, handsome. Who is your wife? <laughs> With his dapper hat. Well, I wanna be different. <laughs> and only because we, as Hawaiians, we are not same old, same old. We are all people. And we must remember that when we respect each other. Always respect each other. Do not take your laundry past the house door. Keep your opala in your house where it belongs. Sorry about my way of introduction. <laughs> we should always remember that there are people out there that they get along so well, and we know that. They cocoa each other, no different than Hawaiians. So, you want to keep your house clean, keep the opala inside. No opala goes outside. Everything stays in the house. Remember that. And I want to mention some experiences that I've gone through coming from Wayanai. My mother, Annie Kalipo, shh, McCandless. <laughs> She was, she was had now in Waianae, October 14, 1889. So, the Okole went and learned plenty from that half breed. Oh, golly. Whew, I've got my, I got my share. And the stick came quick. The stick didn't wait, no, too late. She said, now you're going to get it. That's it. I share that with you. And I also want to share with you a very important learning that we had at one of our community meetings. This person represented the Rockefeller Foundation. And their purpose is to correct damages that were natural and damages that were caused by man. Rockefeller came to that meeting, so this person said, and he looked, he listened, and guess what? He said the Hawaiian people, uh, have, they have no problems. Look at how they get along. Consider that they can get along 
because they leave the Opala back. They do not take hate outside of the door. Everything stays home. There is a need I want, you know, I want to admit that um, we need to have more new blood to not replace the old blood because these old timers, they get plenty behind the, behind the ears, you know. They, they are come out already. But they should have, uh, we should start a plan to you know, make improvements, not only in the organization itself, but make improvements for the new ones coming. And they're going to be all special. Little different thinking than what we had, what we went through, our values. With that in mind, I'd like to end my little effort here that uh, we, as Hawaiian people, are very loving people. And so Rockefeller, when he saw the Hawaiian people in this meeting getting together, so nice, so clear and clean, he said to this young guy that's in charge of his efforts, to make these corrections, because they get plenty of color. He said, we don't have any problems with the Hawaiian people. They are good people. Thank you. OK, I'm going to ask you a question now. That was a very good uh, lesson for us, and actually, I think it was said twice today, Kako. In my pre-interview with you, you shared with me the importance of the Hawaiian civic clubs or other Hawaiian organizations taking the lead to unite our Polynesians, brothers and sisters of the Pacific, to create policies to protect our way of life, malama aina, malama okekai, food safety and security, etc. Do you have a suggestion of how the civic club system can go about doing that. This area that was just covered is a lot more important than anyone here can think about. And what it is, we Hawaiians, we should extend our aloha to the other Polynesians, Tongans, Samoans, the Marquesans, the whole Polynesia, we should start somewhere to tell them we are all cousins. We should do that. We should open up our door so that they can come in and help us. You want a good experience, go to one of their church services. And you can learn how Hawaiian people were so strong together. They sing, they thank Akua, but their singing is what I heard as a keiki. Both in Waianae, a Protestant church, or Makua. Makua had a very beautiful choir. They sang so beautiful. But we need to extend, I believe, our connection in the Pacific. The Pacific is going to be so important for the people of the Pacific. And you know what it is? going to be food. We're going to dig. The world is going to need more food. And where are they going to get it from? From the ocean. The Pacific Ocean. The largest in this, on this planet. Don't mind me, but 
I hope we can develop relationships with all of Polynesia so that we be stronger. That they're not going to come and take away land from the Hawaiian people and get away with it. Hundred and some odd years went by. They're still hanging on to important place. We all learned that. Very important place. Pearl Harbor, huh? You know? Refueling. No different than the times when the, they came from Europe, went to Japan and China to make trade. We learned that in school. And we, gotta re we need to understand that as a Hawaii was very important for these travelers. They came and got water from Hawaii. They got cow, cow food to replenish the ships that were heading to exchange world trade in Japan and China. Don't let that get away from your minds. They're going to need that cow cow, that fish. The Pacific Ocean is full, but we all got to be together so that we don't get kicked out. The stronger we are together as people, as people of the Pacific area, Hawaiian, Tonkin, Samoan, everything, Micronesians, they're all people. And then one, did I tell about the story about Rockefeller? Yes. Good. Don't forget what Rockefeller said. Uh, he has no, no problems with the Hawaiian people. Look at how nice they get along together. That I will never forget in my life. Coming from one Hawley, that he don't know the, our people, but he, Rockefeller knew, the one with the kala. So we got to be getting friendly with them so we can maybe get a little kickback and, you know, maybe they give us uh, more freedom, you know, that we can say, hey, we want a queen. We, we, we don't want these kind of politicians running our, our government. We want the approval from the Ali. They give the final word. Think about it. It's all free. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very colorful. Thank you. We have some time now for questions. If anybody would like to ask questions, um, I can come to you with the mic. Does anybody have any questions for any of our panelists or comments? Anybody want to ask a question? Kamaka. Can you grab the other mic so people on the other side of the room? Thank you. Uh, hi. When we met with the Kupuna, um, Jana talked about the Kaho'olawe claim. Could you highlight that with the, the group, how the Civic Club got involved with the, the reclaiming of Kaho'olawe? Did you hear the question, Donna? Um, Auntie Anita asked how, if you could share how the Hawaiian Civic Club system helped to support the reclamation of Kaho'olawe. Well, as you know, the, um, it was invaded by the, by the brothers from Molokai and they got into some trouble over there. But they also, at our next convention, I remember at Kamehameha, it was right up here, in fact, in the auditorium, into our convention, in the middle of our convention walked Walter Ritty, Emmett Aluli, and, and there was one more. I, who was the other one? No, he wasn't with them, so just the two of them came in. Yeah. And the people at the convention were kind of divided. Some supported the, the guys and some didn't. 
But the fact that they had invaded our convention infuriated Doc. Yeah. And he was, he just, you know, we, our conventions were very structured. And all of a sudden, here was this monkey wrench was thrown into the whole thing. So it started off not so good. But eventually, we came to learn and made some inroads with the Navy so that Civic Club, and, and I think Whitney was, then, was the president by then, yep. the Civic Club members, was, is that correct? Yeah. Civic Club members were taken to Kaho'olawe, uh, the officers, uh, on Navy helicopters. And I, I, I think that's what you were talking, wanted me to talk about. Yeah. And eventually, through Civic Clubs working with the Navy, we did, we're able to get it back. And I think, our, I'm quite sure, our politicians had something to do with it. Danny Noe, by that time, uh, had been honored by the Civic Clubs, too. So uh, he had an ear open. I think one of the reasons Anita asked it, um, some of the young people are not realizing the influence that the Civic Clubs had in very ins uh, um, significant milestones in the political, modern political history of Hawaii. And Kaho Olave was one of them, the civic clubs playing a role in advocating. Can I say a little more? Many yes, please. Will remember the um, Native Hawaiian Study Commission. And Kina'u Kamali'i was the chair of that. Kina'u was a very strong civic club member. And the, the, sta the study commission went throughout the, 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 I the islands, the, the whole state, taking testimony on various things. Uh, do you remember that, Anne? Yes. I went out and I um, looked for my copy of it. But they actually had hearings. The, the office of the study commission, now these were civic club members, was, was an office that Dan Inouye gave them in the... Um, federal building downtown. Um, and if you ever have an opportunity to see the report of the study commission, by all means, do look it up. There's a tr tremendous amount of uh, information in there. Um, they're in all of the libraries, but the study commission was very important, and civic clubs was right at the heart of that. Anne wants to add something to that. Oh, can I add to it? Uh, the the problem with um, the with having young people uh, become involved uh, is because when they come into a meeting and they hear all of the arguments that go on, and so this kind of turns them off. And, and sometimes we have to kind of bring them up to the same level that we are on so that they can understand what is actually going on then in the community, yeah? And when it came to Kaho'olawe, the, the membership was split. George Helms brought his guitar. He was, played his music outside in the hall. Members started drifting over to go listen to him, play his music, not paying attention to the convention. And so finally, the um, powers that be, who were male, very conservative, conceded, okay, we'll have a private meeting with him. And they had to get a consensus from him and an agreement that he would come and he would tell the story then as to what it was all about. And so when he came and he could explain himself better than the others that had just bombarded us, then things could change a little bit, yeah? Tempers could change a little bit, but it took a long time. It took a very long time. And the sad part of it is, down in Milulii, right next door, there's this area called Kapua. The kupuna down there in Milulii decided that they didn't want the Navy over there bombing for them. And so they took it upon themselves 
They wrote their letters to the Navy telling them to stop bombing right next door to them. And the, they won their battle. The Kupuna did it down there. So the Navy stopped it then. But that's what happens, yeah? You have to know what it is that you want to do and do it then. I like that point that you made because a lot of young people have complained, you know, they walk into um, like arguing on a subject. But dissension is not a bad thing. That's how you work it out, work it through the patience. Um, I remember those days. I wasn't in those rooms, but I can imagine. But I hope all of us will fight with passion when it means something to us as leaders. For those who are not familiar with the, um, the Kina'u, that was political. That was, that was appointed by President Reagan, that commission. And he, and it was biased, it was slanted, so that um, after the, they went and interviewed, I mean, I was one of the testifiers, so what I'm saying is when they, when the nine voted, they, it was, and so Kidnao had to file a minority report, right? That's the first time, and it was wonderful. So you need to read the, the first report and the minority report. That's better. Okay, so um, you could see the politics. It was terrible. Minority reports are actually exciting, yeah? It makes the floor exciting. No, I, I, I went through that in D.C., the D.C. for the PLDC. Got my way, though. <laughs> Aloha mai kako, mahalo no kiyala. This one goes to Auntie Anne, since you fought so hard for the Olelo. Um, what do you think of what just happened to Kalekoa on Maui when he tried to speak our language and he was reproached and reprimanded? And what do you think can be done to avoid things like that in the future? Because there are many of us who do speak now. And I believe that we should have the right to express ourselves and to do anything that is done with the government to be done in Hawaiian as well as in English if they need to. I, I agree with, with your statement. I don't speak the language. My parents did. They were fluent speakers, but they never took the time to teach us because that was the norm at that time when we were growing up. You learn to speak English. You don't speak the native language. So my mo'opunas are carrying on. But I agree that the judge did not make the right decision. And I'm glad that now they are going through the system and looking for qualified interpreters because they have interpreters for other languages, so why should they not have interpreters for the Hawaiian language as well? So I agree with your statement. John, no? yes. unless, unless they've changed the constitution of Hawaii, there are two official languages. Yes. One is Hawaiian and one is English. And someone should have pointed that out to the judge. Then, then he could have gotten a, a translator in. Any other questions from the audience? May I give a little bit more? Is our kupuna was so fabulous because my father, born 1905, when I was born, he did not want me to do anything in Hawaiian. The the rule, the thought for our that generation was the turn of the century because the queen was still alive until 1917. They were born in 1905, the early part. And so the, the right word to me when, and I know the rest, was learn the ways of the white man and beat them at their own game to help our people, not to get rich. And you know what? We have, our generations 
have done it. Because now our young people have the, the pala pala. That was the thing. My father said, they keep changing the rules. So that was the key. And so now we have our, our KQ with mass, bachelor's degrees, master's de and doctorates. Fabulous. Uh, to what you're saying, <clears throat> when I was in grade school, and that was a long time ago, <laughs> we were told we were not to speak our mother tongue at all. Our parents were told that they were not to speak Hawaiian to us or Japanese or Pake, whatever, because we had to be westernized. And that was because of the overthrow. Not until 1993, when we celebrated the 100th anniversary of the overthrow, did I realize, oh my gosh, no wonder we had to, we couldn't speak our language. We, you know, we had to be westernized. Thank you. I do want to ask you, Auntie Gladys, this will be the last question before we move on. Um, you have an extensive background being the support person behind government leaders. And I think sometimes people don't put enough value in the people that are behind the scenes when actually that's where a lot of action happens. And they rely a lot on the people that do provide them support. Um, I saw you working for um, Senator Solomon, but can you share anything that you, a tip or advice to people who might not value the support people? What you can share with this audience saying how important it is and why, government. especially in government? What do you mean by that? Um, you as a support person mm -hmm. behind the leaders working, how important that position actually is well, to the, the leader. The secretary, which was my profession for 56 years when I retired, when I was 81, from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. We do the work. We do the work. We're behind the boss, but aloha, Trustee Akana, she just arrived. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, um, so we do the work. We're not in the limelight. We support our bosses and and that's what a secretary does, and that was my, my role. We don't talk, but I always tell my children, and I tell my, my uh, people that I work with closely, Homa Popo yo lessons, your school, Homa Popo yo work. Be loyal to your boss. If you cannot, leave then get out of the, you know, get out. But be loyal to your boss, and that's very important in, you. in the career. Yes. Thank you. Mahalo, mahalo. We do have, um, Trustee Akana just arrived, and she does have a comment more than anything else. Also, I want to mention, uh, don't get involved in other that really gets you into trouble. <laughs> um, aloha mai kako. I'm Rowan Akana, and I wanted to commend Auntie Gladys. You know, Auntie Gladys retired so many times. And <laughs> as you know, she worked for David Trask. He was a tough boss. And then Malama, who was a tough boss. And, um, and then me. And so... <laughs> Uh, and then she worked for Moses Kiali as well. And when Moses retired, uh, she came to work for me. And I came to pay tribute to her today because she's the best secretary I ever had and will ever have. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Do you know that at 90, how old are you now, Auntie Gladys? 92 next week. 92. <laughs> 
she still calls me up and says, Rowena, you know, this was in the newspaper. You better respond. And <laughs> so she's still correcting me and telling me what to do. <laughs> so thank you so much, Auntie Gladys, for all you have contributed. I love to you. Us. <laughs> The lesson is don't fear hard bosses. You learn the most from them, yeah? Hard <laughs> bosses. Um, Pat, um, this is the, f I'm sorry. This is the vice president of the Hawaiian Civic Club of Honolulu and she has a few words she would like to share. Mahalo. Thank you everybody for coming. And by the way, um, we have these mahalo grams on the table with the food. If you want to pick one up and give a shout out to one or all of our panelists, write them a short little note and we'll see that they get them afterwards. They're in the box over there. Anything, anything you want to do. I wanted to make a comment about the leadership advice that you were giving us because that's what we're about, creating leadership to carry on the work that these people are still doing today. When I first joined the Civic Club, or in the early days, don't know nothing about Robert's rules, don't know nothing about much, except what we want to know. So we're young, we come into the Civic Club, and I remember particularly one event that changed our participation. Paige Barber, myself, Claire Hughes, I don't even remember what we were fighting for at this point, but we wanted to talk. And of course, we didn't know point of order, or have a question, or da da da. We didn't know all that stuff. And we had to face um, Arthur Hope and Doc Mills. And they, you know, I mean, we were being just shunted all over the place because everybody was riding over us using Robert's rules. So go, who the heck is this Robert? You know, we don't know anything about this Lopaka. So we tried to talk and finally Doc Mills said to Claire and Paige and myself, you ladies, you better stay in the kitchen. <laughs> and do your thing. Oh, he lit the fire. He lit the fire. Benson Lee was the president, I think, at that time where there was a transition or one. And I want to say strong leadership is good because we've got to keep things in order. And Robert helps us keep things moving. <laughs> but there's also a need to teach and to learn, you know, to, 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 what do I want to say, corral all the energy of the young people that are coming in, or the not so young who are just coming in for the first time. And it was Benson Lee who would teach us. He would, he would not scold us, but he would teach us. This is what you have to do if you want to do that. This is the way you do it. And by, by him teaching us, we stayed in the movement, all three of us still in the movement. Paige, of course, is gone, but till her last day, she was active. And now we have Anel Amaral with a reputation for being a tough boy. But Anel does the same thing in her way. If you want this to happen, this is what you have to do. If you vote this way, this is what is going to happen. That's teaching, and that's encouraging people to keep involved, not turning them the way, oh, God, I can't stand this bickering that's going on. It's not bickering. We're sharing our ideas, and we have a right to our own ideas. And Hawaiians, as Senator Ninoya always used to say, we don't have to think alike on every issue. We have our own minds. We're for, we're against. We don't know, but we talk it out. So I just wanted to um, say to Anel, that leadership style is still going on. And isn't that interesting? Another Wahine president. So Anel, <laughs> would you like to say something about leadership? Thank, thank you, Pat. Thank you very much for letting me speak for a moment. Um, and. One of the things I, I, I want to say is that uh, 
I, I have been through a number of movements. I don't know if you, you know that. I have a history of advocacy for women. Um, I've done lots of work in facilitations and helping voices be heard in complex situations. Um, but I think that the best lesson that I have ever had in my life experience has been the Hawaiian Civic Club movement. And the best schooling I have ever had has been here. And, and for those of you that may not know me, um, I'm not the best student, by the way. <laughs> I'm very difficult to work with. You, just, just saying, just saying. And so now as the president, I love when people are difficult on the floor. <laughs> I love to see that fire and that passion. And to hear a voice that doesn't necessarily agree with the majority voice. There's some new message for us to learn. Civic Clubs provides that voice. Civic Clubs supports that new leader that doesn't look like the old leaders, by the way, and that's okay. Um, it's a spectacular work that all of you have done, and we are grateful to be able to stand on your shoulders. And still doing. And still, still doing. doing. There you go. Yeah, she corrects me every day. May I say, um, may, may, may I say one more thing? My whole career, I had Hawaiian bosses and they were all smart people. That's one. <laughs> and there's... Thank you. Thank you, Anel. I do want to share a quote that Senator Malama Solomon said on the Senate floor in a fiery... Um, she was sharing uh, about activism. And it's so true about our people. We're in your face, but by your side. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to call Julian and um, President Manu Boy to close out our meeting before. Oh, you have a question? I'm sorry, Tony. Let Tony not ask the question, yeah. <laughs> I am not asking a question. But I just wanted to say thank you to our kupuna. <laughs> And to let all of you that are new to Civic Club or are recently new, unlike most of us that are seasoned already, how fortunate you are to hear from these kupuna who has taught us very well, I might add. Thank you so much. And I would like to add my mahalo to the, the panel of Kupuna, as well as to Pohai. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of amazed because I'm 75 years old. I joined my first Hawaiian Civic Club in 2006. So I'm a youngster in this movement. And how wonderful it is that even at the age of 75, I feel like I can still learn and grow and have an opportunity to benefit from the inspiration of these five kupuna here. Um, one of the, the wonderful things I think about living today is that when you forget stuff, it's very easy to grab your phone and do a Google search on it. And you know, why I am inspired, among other things, by what I've heard, is because if we remember what our great King Kamehameha said, Ina'ivali no oko, i ku'upono a olepau. Among his last words. And so, when Basically, he said, Kamehameha was saying that my, my work is not, is not pow, it's not done. And truly, I believe, based on what we've heard this morning, we can see that what these people 
started, much of it is still not Powell. You know, you look at what Auntie Anne shared in terms of our Olelo, the fact that today we have to fight to demand that in a court of law, our people do have a choice between the two official languages, despite what happened in 1978 with the Constitution. Aole Palkahana. The work is not done. So there's still so much, I believe, that needs to be done, and we do it on the shoulders of people such as these. You know, and Manu led our civic club in 2006 when we sang Kana'i El Puni at the convention at the Waikiki Marriott Hotel. And by the way, Hawaiian Civic Club of Honolulu won. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's in, in some ways it's like going full circle, yeah? You come back again to the wisdom of our leaders, such as Kamehameha, the wisdom of our kupuna who have led us in the Civic Club movement, and I'm ever so grateful that I had the opportunity, along with all of you, to be here this morning. I am just sad for the people who didn't make the time to be here. Because we all, we all, we all gained something here this morning, thanks to these people. And so mahalo to our five kupuna, mahalo to our outstanding moderator, Pohai. Uh, Mahalo to Jamie Fong and the staff of Kaiva Kilo Moku for hosting us here this morning. Mahalo to the students from St. Francis Video Productions and their advisor, Ryan Ragus. And mahalo especially to the two ladies who had the vision to have this happen. Anita Naone and Pat Brent. Okay, I don't know about the program. I know that um, we're going to have lunch, but Manu, you gonna you gonna pull it for us or? Okay, Manu. Well, well, nice hand for Julia and Kiki Lani Ako also for, for this. I just wanted to, you know, I, there's so much to say, and, and, the, and the stories that were shared brought back many memories. When, when I was a, a Keiki, my mom and dad belonged to the Prince Kuhio Hawaiian Civic Club, and we used to go to, regularly to Auntie Gardy Perkins' house. And Auntie Gardy Perkins was Uncle Pinky Thompson's mother, and she lived in Kuli O'o. And one of my earliest memories, and this is our cousin Kimo Brown, Auntie Anuhe, and Uncle Kihei's son, my, my brother, the one right above me, um, Tommy, our cousin Tiare. And I remember sitting under the piano and seeing Auntie Anuhe's feet go up and down on the pedal of the piano. And music was such a big part of that. They did their Puole Lani concerts that really made an impact on, on all of us. So I really appreciate that. Um, I'm listening to the stories from Auntie Anne Nathaniel of, of, of Keokaha and Panaeva, and it reminds me of a song uh, uh, or, or, or a person, a homesteader, Albert Nahalea. And Albert Nahalea wrote uh, probably the first song, and, and, and one of the only, probably till this day, that actually expresses mahalo to our ali'i. And our, um, our kuleana to support our ali'i, he says mahalo ya o e ke ali'i, um, and it's, uh, uh, referring to Kalaniana Ole. But one of the, the most important lines in that song, Ku'uhome o Keokaha, 
ke aukaha is my home, he says, e hana like kakou me ke aloha i mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. So it's not about only working together as Hawaiians that will help us to achieve the restoration of that sovereignty and that pono state of the land, but it's working together with aloha. And that was really stated, I think, by the panel as well. You have to have aloha and respect for one another. Pono ka ho'olohe anamai, you need to listen to one another, and that's what we've learned to do. Um, I also want to point out uh, to um, the Kupuna Albert and, and, the, and the Manao about the... Um, uh, the importance of our Polynesian ohana and acknowledge that, again, Uncle Pinky Thompson, uh, who was uh, the inspiration for the building of this particular center, Kaiva Kilo Moku, uh, was also instrumental in the establishment of the Polynesian Voyaging Society in the early 1970s. And through his son and through hundreds and hundreds, and if not thousands of other people, that the beginning of that relation, rekindling the relationship with our ohana has really occurred. And I'm happy to announce, if I, if not, not to be uh, inappropriate, but Jamie Fong and her husband, Dr. Randy Kamuela Fong, uh, are helping to initiate a Polynesian consortium that, w that this particular center will be uh, one of the homes for to do exactly what Kupuna Albert was talking about. It's a great idea. It's what uh, King Kalakaua intended to do by establishing o what he called Oceania, or Oceania, a Polynesian confederation. Uh, with that said, I, I, I would like to um, uh, have us all join in song. Um, uh, Julian suggested Kanai uh, Puni, but I think we want to take a moment and, and, uh, and take some time to honor our founder, Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole. Um, I, I, I've been sort of, a, as my grandma would call me, Poopa Akiki. I thought that was my name growing up, Poopa Akiki. <laughs> in insisting that this is our centennial right now. We were established in 1918, and it's 2018. So we need to remember our, our anniversary date is December um, December 6th. Yeah, we got it wrong on the T-shirt, but that's okay, easy. We just get this red ink and make, man, change the number. But the important thing is, is that we've come a long way. And Kalani and, and, and to hear the panelists also say that we really have achieved or are, or are, are, are in the process of achieving the, the founding uh, goals of, uh, of Kalaniana Ole and the Ahahui Pu'uhonua Onahawai'i, the Hawaiian Protective Society. And again, Reverend Akaiko Akana, Charles E. King, uh, Noah Aluli, William Ha'ehaehin, and, and many others who are confidants of, of Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole. Uh, they, their vision is, is our reality today, I think. So mahalo, congratulations to all of you. I also want to comment on Auntie Bobby Mills because um, we, we've always not had a hard time having a little fun, you know, in between um, our, our hana. And that is something that our kupuna taught us uh, as well. We can be serious, 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 and then they kind of make a funny joke. Everybody laughs, and they go back to the serious work. So we need to learn to not take ourselves too seriously sometimes. And ehana like kako me ke aloha i mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. Work together with aloha, and that's how we will achieve the, the restoration of the sovereignty of the land and its, uh, its state of Pono. Ano Laila, wa make make wau e alaka ia uko himeni kako ike mele nahale a ihaku o kuhome o keokaha. We ask that we all sing and we should know this song by now. If you don't, we're going to use the centennial year and you have a few months left to memorize the words because we're not going to go to any more meetings and Hawaiians have to use words to sing kuhome o keokaha. And that's a special shout out to Auntie Anne Nathaniel. So kuhako we Luna, uh, we'll sing Ku Home O Keokaha, Alaila Ho'onani I Kamakua Mau, the doxology, and uh, we are now ready to have lunch as well. Ike Ia Ikanani O Keauka Aina Ho no na Hawaii, no na Hawaii. Home ulu vehi vehi, home ulu vehi vehi. Ika ulu hala, ika ulu ha. Heno hea ika maka, heno hea ika maka. O kalehu lehu, o kalehu lehu. Hemakana ke ia mai ke ali'i 
Thank you, everyone. Don't forget to fill out the forms. I was supposed to remind everybody about, I guess it's like a post-event form in the front. Thank you, and stay around, talk story, have lunch. Mahalo.